The primary purpose of social studies is to help young people make informed and reasoned decisions for the public good as citizens of a culturally diverse, democratic society in an interdependent world. That's according to the National Council for the Social Studies. Hi, I'm John Zingali, and I'm here today to talk to you about how we use project-based learning and inquiry and design in our classrooms to help make this come to fruition for our students. Social studies is the subject that is at the convergence of many different areas of study and is more than just history. It's also economics, civics, geography, archaeology, philosophy, religion, math, science, and more. Social studies is a class that helps students understand the past so they can make sense of the world around them today and in the future. It also shows them how they can use the past to better understand things and make better decisions and be more productive citizens in their community and beyond. If we understand why we need to teach social studies, next we must look at the ways of how we teach it. I believe that teaching history and social studies shouldn't be just memorizing facts and dates, reading textbooks, and taking multiple choice tests. I believe we need to engage our students in historical inquiry and thinking by having them reading primary and secondary sources, analyzing many different types of different information, conducting actual research, and creating many different types of historical products. In short, we need to teach them how to be historians. This will allow them to look at many different scenarios throughout their lives, be able to ask good questions, conduct research, and come up with answers and conclusions for themselves. When I started to create my classroom, I went back and I was asked, who's that, why did you want to become a teacher? For me, one of the big things was my high school history teacher, Mr. John Dryden. He inspired me, he challenged me, he taught me to think. He gave us different perspectives. He didn't teach from a textbook, he made us read and write and discuss with one another cordially. What he did was he gave me the skills that prepared me not only for college, but for real life and beyond. And it's that that I want to bring into my classroom. One of the things and issues with social studies though is so many students dislike it. It's rated many times as one of the most disliked classes in high school. And why is this? They find it boring. They don't like the textbooks. It's not relevant to them. And they don't see themselves in the learning. But if you ask adults later on, they love history. And we need to understand why. It's because they're in control of their learning. It's relevant to them. And they're not reading textbooks. They're reading other documents and other types of information. So can we bring that type of history that adults like into our classrooms now for our students? Also in the back of my mind was, what are some big questions? What are the big things that I want my students to take away from my class? And I asked myself four questions. How can I create active citizens. What skills will the students need to be successful? How is this learning relevant to the students and their lives? And my last one, would I want to be a student in my own class? If I found it boring to just read from a textbook and memorize different things for a test just so I could pass the test, I wouldn't want to be that in my own class. And that's where project-based learning and inquiry comes in. Over the years, I've developed what I call HIPstery. HIPstery stands for Hands-On, Individualized, and Project-Based History. It is an inquiry-based approach to teaching these classes. It integrates inquiry, design, computational thinking, and technology with social studies to create an innovative classroom experience that's not only fun and engaging, but empowering and fosters the 21st century skills 
that students will need well beyond my classroom. This is difficult work. But as I'm asking the pieces of would I want to be a student in my own class, I had to think not just about myself as a teacher, but as my students. And so hipstery came about because I wanted to be inquiry and historical thinking based. I was going to use projects and big themes that tie the units together throughout the year and throughout their time with me in middle school. It allows students to develop critical thinking, historical thinking, and computational thinking skills, along with speaking and listening skills, that they will need to use in our class, but also well beyond our classroom later on in life. They also will learn how to make multiple different types of historical products like documentaries, exhibits, video and audio interviews, board games, video games, infographics, augmented and virtual reality, and so on. It's not just writing papers in our class. And we're also going to focus in on place. Who, what are the local issues here in Vancouver, in Washington State? And how can we use things in our own backyard, like Mount St. Helens and Fort Vancouver, to better understand historical events? and what's going on in the world around us. Every city, state has its own standards that they want you to use and teach. There's no way to teach all of it, so we, I use those standards as a crux to create the projects. So, as an example, when we teach civics, we look at the different branches of government, the checks and balances, and trying to understand the, the Constitution and how our government was set out. We do that through game design. Students study different branches of government, and they work together in teams to build a board game or video game that teaches a governmental process. How does a law, bill become a law? How do you become a representative? How do you become president? What is the electoral college? How do votes get cast? All of these different things can be brought into a game that teaches, then teaches others about it. But we're also looking at design and, and other types of thinking that bring things to fruition. We study our local history here in Vancouver through archaeology and photogrammetry. We're looking at artifacts. Kids are learning how to do archaeological thinking directly from the people at Fort Vancouver and myself. We've actually created virtual reality tours and a 3D online virtual exhibit where we 3D scanned artifacts and taught others about the items that were found here and how they impact us and what they tell us about our everyday lives. I promote active citizenship through letter writing from Congress. At the end of our US history course, we're looking at the different amendments. How do those play a role in our lives today? What issues do our students face, our communities face, that are important to them? And how do they relate back to the Constitution? Instead of just writing an essay, they write a letter to their representative in both houses of Congress, and they get sent off. One of my favorite projects is National History Day. Please look into it if you're not sure about it. But that one uses a yearly theme to have kids do inquiry-based design where they build exhibits, websites, documentaries, performances, or they can even write a paper. But to see kids come together and do high-level historical research on myriad of topics and see the hard work pay off, it's well worth it. We also teach students how to do primary source interviews about historical topics. I do that through Mount St. Helens. And our students go out and interview community members that experienced it. They learn how to conduct this research and be historians. What does the experience of Mount St. Helens from 40 years ago tell us about the past? How can some of those things be applied today? 
it was pretty interesting to hear them talk about how they had to learn how to wear masks and everything when that was happening. Our community has dealt with that 40 years ago to something that's currently happening today. We also look at immigration over the United States history using census data. And we have kids build infographics and robots that show how and where people came from outside of the United States and when they got here. These types of things teach computational thinking. They look at the science of human movement. There's connections to so many different classes through project-based design and inquiry design. And I encourage you all, even though it may be daunting, to try it within your own classrooms. Because what it does is it provides an ownership to the students of their learning. It enables students to see themselves in their own history and allows students to make connections to their own worlds. And when they can do those things, they're going to remember the lessons and the learning long after they leave my classroom. I encourage you to take a look at inquiry and project-based design in your own classrooms and help inspire and empower students to find their voice.